But if you want to make money fast, and I'm talking fast, go find great founders. Teaming up with Patrick and David has paid our family over $10 million in, in counting. The one thing most people don't know how to do is how to be a number two. He says, I'm rich. He says, guys, I'm very rich. PBD, I'm not the CEO type. I don't care to be the title of being founder. All I care right now is to get my family wealthy, to get my family rich. What you just said, no, you have wisdom. It's very difficult to teach that. He calls me, he's in tears. He's in the sauna naked. He's like, God, I can't believe what just happened with this check. I was not, ex he got a man. Massive check. What's cracking, everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Zapata here. Hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And very first time I've done a reaction video to my very own mentor, Patrick but David, on the Fresh and Fit podcast. I I think the only time I watched a Fresh and, Fresh and Fit podcast and just slices of it was when Andrew Tate was on it. And um, Saucy here, Adam Saucy, his right-hand man on the Valley Team and PBD podcast is on this Fresh and Fit podcast. So very interesting here. I've never done this before with my own mentor, uh, Patrick, but David here. And uh, just to let you guys know my relationship with PBD, I'm his number one income earner here at PHP Agency. This is his core business, is running a national financial marketing organization. Uh, Patrick has been planning his moves already for many years now in terms of value attainment. It started from a 5,000 uh, channel uh, YouTube subscriber base when I first came in to the company in 2015. And value attainment was just primarily to be used to train his national sales force across the country with the values and premises that he wanted all of us to invoke into our in our businesses. And you know, value attainment became one of those wonders where it just exploded out of nowhere. And uh, Patrick just crushed it. And today, 3.3 million people are following him on Valuetainment. I, I can't tell you how much of a, an honor it's been for myself just to watch this happen, uh, writing shoddy as he's making these type of moves. You know, I always said that Patrick is a once in a generation type of CEO, once in a generation type of leader. His next move is Valuetainment, and uh, he wants to compete with the CNNs and the Foxes and the the whole media world. Let's dive into this Fresh and Fit podcast interview. I want Patrick here. My team said that he says something about young men getting rich, being a number two, and Fat Joe. Let's check this out. Doc Hancock goes to PBD. That would, uh, what would you recommend a young man making mid six figures with solid income security to look uh, out for in terms of asymm uh, asymmetrical returns? Very simple. Either, either go and team up with a founder that you know is going places and become his best right hand guy. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. That's exactly what I did. And doing so the last seven years with PHP agency teaming up with Patrick and David has paid our family over ten million dollars in, in counting. I watched a video a week ago by uh, not big pun, Fat Joe. And Fat Joe talks yes. about how, you know, he talks about how the one thing most people don't know how to do is how to be a number two. He says, mm -hmm. listen, my entire life, I've been a great number two. He says, when I was a kid growing up, my older brother, I was a number two. So I would open a door. I said, here you go. What can I get you? I would go get him a drink, get the food. Everything was, I'm his number two. He says, then I made all the money, but I learned how to be a number two. He says, I'm rich. He says, guys, I'm very rich. At this point of the game, I make money whether I get out of bed or not. He yes. says, however, as rich as I am, I'm not as rich as DJ Khaled, who's yeah. younger than me. Mm -hmm. And he says, if DJ Khaled and if Khaled and I go out, I still open a door to him because I'm a great number two. Mm -hmm. Somebody like that, that, Doc Hancock, if you want to make money fast, and I'm talking fast, Go find great founders who are killers, who have a reputation. They're going to get the job done. And they say they're going to do it. doesn't matter what space it is in real estate. I'm less interested in the industry. I'm more interested in the founder. Mm -hmm. Not only are you going to learn the habits of this founder, and then you say, hey, Myron, what do I need to do to own a piece of your business? Hey, you know, Fresh, what can I do to own a piece of this thing you're building? Then Myron may say, well, look, in the next two years, if you do X, Y, Z, I'll give you stock options. I'll do this. I'll do that. Well, then once you do that, when the company goes public or it sells or it gets acquired, something happens. Let me just pause here right quick. When I came to Patrick in 2014, my loyalty to PBD is because he allowed me to be who I am. And I already told him, I said, PBD, I'm not the CEO type. I'm not so sure if I'm a matter of fact, my wife is a probably a better CEO than I am. I'm, a, I'm a kind of a free bird. I, I don't like sitting in a lot of boring meetings. I don't have like, I don't like having a collar over my neck. By, by the way, a lot of people think that being a CEO is a, is a glorious position. I'm telling you right now, I was part of Patrick C-Suite at PHP Agency. There's a lot of boring meetings you don't want to be a part of. Accountability meetings that you don't want to be a part of. People holding a, a, accountable to numbers that you already know you got to hit, but they make you feel like shit going through that process. But that's part of your responsibilities as a C-Suite executive, or in this case, as a CEO. I'd much rather be the field guy. That's me. I'm more the barbarian. 
I'm more like the guy, listen, tell me what my marching orders are. I'm going to go smash it. I'm going to go run through the wall. And that's my type. That's, that's me knowing who I am. And I don't care to be the CEO. I don't care to be the title of being founder. All I care right now is to get my family wealthy, to get my family rich, to create generational wealth. And that necessarily didn't need to be me being a CEO or founder. So oftentimes I found so many people breaking off too soon from being mentored by Patrick. And next thing you know, they flop in their business and you should have stayed around another one, two, three years, whoever that CEO or founder that you're working with to learn the ropes, to learn the mistakes under the guidance and wings of somebody else. Like I've seen Patrick make mistakes and I've seen Patrick get angry. I see how Patrick handles his anger and his temper. I see how Patrick handles himself, which you don't think are mistakes. And so there are things that he revealed to me that he's healed from, but years after. He, did, he doesn't reveal things to me in the moment. He'll, he'll stop and take pictures, but he doesn't tell anybody about it. And I learned that habit from PB because I, you know, my wife and I, we go through our stuff. Things aren't always peachy. You know, it's, always, it's not always a rose garden, but we do take pictures because that for us is like creating a monument. So therefore, when we do conquer this mine, we do conquer that mountain. I can look back and say, hey, babe, look how far we've come. Thank you for being by my side. Thank you, PBD, for mentoring and guiding me through this. So let's continue on with the story about what Patrick here has to say about Amor. We love you, Amor. We miss you, Amor. Darling. He calls every woman he meets, darling. We call Amor the most interesting man. Anyway, this is a picture of Amor. Miss you, big dog. 21 years ago, when I say boss, he was kind of the guy that monitored all the business I was doing on the securities industry. He got me out of trouble. Like, if I was doing business and I was younger, come, he said, don't do this. Don't do that. He's, he's a compliance guy. He kept guy. me from being Jordan Belfort. The, he, that's, <laughs> that's, he's that guy. Right. Okay. Sweetheart. So, of so I love him. So Chief one day, officer. him and I meet at Rafi's place, and I said, Amor, what are you doing where, where you're currently at? He says, well, you know, I'm doing this. I'm like, listen. I uh, by, by the way, uh, he made a comment there so you don't turn into Jordan Belfort. Jordan Belfort had a chief compliance officer. Jordan Belfort just chose not to listen to him. Patrick chose to listen to his chief compliance officer. He paid him to do that. And uh, Patrick was wise. He'd ask questions like, okay, Amor, I want to do this. Will this get me in jail? Is this crossing a line? Will this, make, will, will this get our company in hot water? Because the last thing I want to do as a CEO with my guys building their sales team and building their sales force and building PHP, the last thing I want to do as a CEO is to be a distraction. To do something out there where I'm a distraction. Sometimes CEOs do that to their companies. They become a distraction as if it's not hard enough to be working at that company, to build that company, to build that brand, to move the products and services off the shelf. The CEO doesn't need to be another distraction. And Patrick has never been a distraction to us at PHP. He's actually been the opposite. I started an insurance company. You know how hard I work. Why don't you come and be my compliance guy? Mm, and he says, you, but, but Pat, you got nothing going on. I said, you know, I got nothing going on right now, but you know who I am. I'm going to work. So finally, I said, let's do another meeting with your wife. So his wife shows up. So Tim and his wife at the time, ex-wife at the time, and we're sitting down talking. Anyway, so we have dinner. I said, come on board. It was at the early stages of the company. He got equity. Well, you know, when this whole event took place three months ago, Amor is famous for FaceTiming you and rooming up with you and walking out of, out of the shower naked. This is because he's from France. So he's got a little bit of that French thing going for himself. <laughs> so all of a sudden, next he, he, says, he calls me. He's in tears. He's in the sauna naked. He's like, God, I can't believe what just happened with this check. I was not. Ex he got a massive check mm -hmm. for himself. But again, he did the right thing. He teamed up with somebody that's a founder going places. So doc, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say, go find a killer founder, run with them for three, five years, maybe 10 years, do whatever you can to be the right hand person. And yeah. you're gonna make a lot of money. Chances are you're gonna make a lot of money. That is some sauce great right there. information. Well, uh, by, by the way, also notice Patrick's style. You know, uh, at PHP agency, Patrick, you'd never find Patrick alone. Patrick would be in a lot of meetings. He'd be in, in, in the field visiting offices, but he's always bringing people with him because that's his way of training up the next generation of people that he's building in the company. So um, if you notice here, Adam Sosnick sitting to his right, our left, he knew Adam from the insurance, well, from insurance conferences. And when they started the podcast years ago, Saucy was his co-host. And so I've observed Patrick doing the same thing with Adam Sosnick as he's done with myself, as he's done with Jose Marlene Gaetan, as he's done with Rodolfo and Ceci Vargas, as he's done with Hector and Erico Del Toro, as he's done with Ricky and Erico uh, Aguilar, um, as he's done with George Palayo, he's always bringing somebody. So if you want to know a habit that a great CEO founder does, that's what he always, he always brings. That is an entourage. I mean, he doesn't need Adam as an entourage. He's, he's doing two things. He's building up people next to him. He's also helping not only brand them, 
But also he's got to partner that he's creating. He's creating running mates. Patrick's creating running mates in his life, whether it's in his personal life, his business life. Patrick is always creating running mates by getting them always around. Like you should see Patrick negotiate contracts. He wouldn't be in that boardroom alone negotiating contracts. He's got Morale listening in. He's got Tigran listening. He's got Alexis Moody listening. His C-suite executives listening. So therefore, and by the way, this is before they became C-suite executives. This is when they're still maybe at the mid-level manager level. And then he built them up to become C-level executives. So uh, great CEO founders know how to build up people around them. I just want to add to that because this yeah. is something that we talk about a lot. You talk about our friend Tom knowing what number you need to be. Okay. Yeah. He was never a number one. He was always a number two, three, four, four, yeah. five. For as long as I've. Uh, Ed is bringing up uh, Tom Ellsworth, BizDoc, who's had the three, uh, I'm sorry, four companies now because we've, we've exited. So four, four total exits of totaling $1.35, $1.4 billion in his career is now known as BizDoc. And the wisdom that Tom Ellsworth brings to the table has been priceless. So continue, Adam. What, what else you got to add to that? Lived. I've always been the number two guy. And I'm totally cut. Like, you have to understand what kind of ego you need to like put aside. Everyone's got an ego. Of course. Uh, one of the things I learned, the ego is not the amigo. <laughs> in, <laughs> true. in high school, <laughs> I like that one. The ego is not the amigo, bro. In high school, you met my friend Terrell. Yep. On the basketball team, he was all county, all did, amazing player. He's the shooter. I'm the point guard. I'm good with that, bro. We went places. Okay. After college, you know, Keith, multi, multi, multi millionaire family, billionaire family, started hotels, started clubs, bodega. I'll be the number two guy. No problem. We're running things. Even with my buddy, Chris, the guy, Chris Humphreys that married Kim Kardashian. Yes. I'm right there. I'm the number two guy. I'm walking Chloe down the aisle. I got no problem. I'm not with Kim. I'm with Chloe. So when I meet Pat and he's like, listen, I need you to run with me, but clearly you're the number two guy, dude, I'm right there with you, brother. Yep. And to have someone who's definitely a number one is so powerful. Cause I, it, I'm the type of person that likes to give assists. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't need the ball. I don't need to be a scorer. You if know, we did play basketball, I'm more like a number 11. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's more of a Dennis Rodman. Rodman. And there it is, Patrick's uh, humble again, uh, but yet powerful at the same time. You know, I'm, I, I was thinking about many different number twos. I referenced the Bible. I referenced sports. So if I'm thinking about the Bible, I'm thinking about Joseph. You know, Joseph was what? The 11th, 11th son, the youngest son of all of his brothers. And they, they basically shunned him away. They sold him off. And who bought him was Potiphar, who's an Egyptian. So he brought brought them into, the, into, into Egypt and and, and he worked himself up. I mean, Joseph worked himself up. If you, if you read the Bible, he worked himself up in, in the, uh, the hierarchy of, 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 of Egypt to the point where he's a right-hand man to Pharaoh. And uh, Pharaoh's got, he's got these dreams and he doesn't know how to interpret these dreams. Who's interpreting these dreams? Joseph, the Hebrew. And he's interpreting his dreams. Next thing you know, he's uh, uh, asking questions about the famine. Next thing you know, he's advising the Pharaoh about what to do with the famine, with countries coming to to Egypt because everybody's got no food, but Egypt's got an abundance of food. And so he's, a, he's asking Joseph's guidance on how to properly rule Egypt. And then there's also a story later on where he reconnects with his brothers. But my point is that even a number two is still very powerful. Another one is, is Aaron, who served Moses. You know, let my people go. So even Moses needed to have a right-hand guy named Aaron to help him hold up his staff, to help the, the Hebrews cross the Red Sea. He needed leadership. He needed a number two. Listen, a number one can't do what they need to do unless they have a strong number two, having strong running mates. So the number twos are just as powerful, in my opinion, as a number one without the responsibility of being the number one or the, the title being number one. Because number one, it, I mean, you really have to be very, very twisted to be number one. I know I'm not that twisted. I know I want to be powerful, but I'm not, I'm, even me right now, I'm not so sure if I'm the CEO type. I know I got to be better as a CEO and that's my maturation process as a business leader. I'm not a full operator. I understand that. I don't know if I want to be, but if there's a situation where I can get the benefit of being in the decision-making process to be the profit, the, the most profitable uh, uh, portion of those conversations, and that requires me being number two, and I can step aside, let number one do number one things, let number two do number two things. It's a win-win situation for me. So don't think that just because you're working for a CEO founder, they're any less important. If you work with somebody at a strong number one, and you need to build yourself up from number 10 or number 15 to number five to number four, number three, number two, number one, if you have the benefit of doing so, and you don't have to invest a lot of your money to do so, you just basically sweat equity your way up, 
Well, it's a blessing to be there because a lot of people don't have that opportunity. I'm in type. He's yeah. like the uh, Persian uh, Dennis Rodman. But what Pat's saying is maybe you're not the number one, bro. Maybe you're the number two. It's, There's it, nothing wrong with being the number three or number four. Like, yeah. Like, it's like us. Yeah. I'm a number two. I'm glad with it. Yeah. He's number one. But you, but it's but, in but different, you, you excel to, you in have, different things. Uh, listen, what you just said. Okay, so today it's so funny. We're driving today and we go and have lunch with Mario and Tom and Jennifer, my wife. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about relationships, marriage, which I know you guys are very excited about getting married one day. <laughs> but we're talking about marriage and relationships, right? And so we talked. I, I, I gather with that comment, uh, I gather the fresh and fit guys aren't about marriages and relationships. They, they kind of chuckled at it, huh? I gotcha. So they were like, I want to be single. I want to have three dates in a night. But th that's what they, okay. Because I, I guess you tell by that chuckle, you know, the guys have zero desire to ever get married. And by the way, no, no judgment behind that. All good. About different women in your life, the different difference between being smart and wise. Mm -hmm. Okay. Most people want to be smart. Okay. Because it's impressive. You want to kind of, hey, here's how smart I am. What you just said, you're not no, smart. Wise. You're wise. No, wise. That's a right. smart person may want to compete with them and say, no, I'm going to be better than mine and all this. Mm -mm. No, you have wisdom. And it's, ve it's very difficult to teach that, to have wisdom. It's a choice that you make. And that's a sign of maturity for a guy whose age ends with the number nine, <laughs> starts with the number two, mm -hmm. that's about to turn 30 in yeah. October. October and by the way, October just so 30. you guys know, I know you guys don't share this kind of stuff off camera, right? Like five minutes before we got started, he was crying on my shoulder. Like, what do I do when I turn 30 years old? I was telling him it's okay. It's going to be fine. So, Well, you're going to be all right, bro. Well, I, I, I got to say this, man, because uh, that's true. But, but I've, I've noticed uh, another guy with inside the Valley Entertainment Organization. I've seen Mario. Mario started with Patrick when he was 18, 19 years old. And I've seen Mario uh, in the field uh, sell life insurance, but Mario found himself as a role being his social media manager. And he evolved in many different roles. Now he's, Mario's got 30, 35 people that he's in charge of at Valuetainment, and he's a key piece of Valuetainment. I mean, Valuetainment is not the same place without a Mario Aguilar. Now the person in mind that comes up is, is a, a George Palayo inside uh, Patrick's world, with inside PHP, my business partner. He was 18, 19 years old. He was a server at Red Lobster, but he hung around a guy like Patrick Bet David. He hung around a CEO founder type. And look at George Pilar today. He's about to have his first kid. He's a multi, multi, multi millionaire, drives around a Ferrari, you know, can live wherever he wants to live, lives in California, lives in Texas, wherever he wants to go. That's George Pilar because he was around and was a benefactor of being around a number one while he's a number two. And even though we're a number two, we're still in our own internal organization with inside PHP, we're number one of our organization but inside the context of PHP, we're at number two. So for me personally, I've got no ego or problem being in that regard. If that means I gotta work just as hard to get the same type of clout and recognition to PBD, well, so be it. But in the meantime, I'm getting myself financially established. I had a lot of mistakes in my life I need to recover from. I had to make sure my family is squared away. I need to make sure my team is squared away. Then I can work on becoming a better CEO. But in the meantime, I'm a field leader. In the meantime, I'm a number two at PHP agency. I'm a number one in my endeavors internally. But in the context of my peers and Patrick, I'm very comfortable being number two. And there is a difference between being smart and wise. And if you have the opportunity to reach out to people, to work with them, whether they're in real estate or insurance, as Patrick had mentioned, work with them for years, not just six months, not just, but don't just intern, find a way to constantly get back to them. For example, we just launched uh, Faith Made Millionaire. I said, Patrick, I'd be, I want to be one of the first books that you mentioned on the value, value attainment imprint. And what did Patrick do? Because of what I've provided for the company and what we did for the company, he made it the book of the month in September for all of PHP Agency, which made it a number one bestseller on Amazon in multiple categories. So the benefit of being with somebody and through them, you have access to conversations. And like, I'm not mean Kobe Bryant without Patrick or David. I'm not mean Shaq without Patrick or David. Not, I'm not mean Wayne Gretzky and and Coach John Calipari and all these guys that Patrick has has has, uh, has brought to the table. But at the same time, too, I've earned my spot. It's not like Patrick. Oh, I'm just going to bless you with this. No, I've earned my spot with inside the company, which a lot of people just don't want to do. They're ambitious, but yet they're lazy. But if you're ambitious and you work hard and you outlast a lot of people, you become a strong number two, and you do the things that a number one would do anyway, just without the core responsibility what a number one brings. I study Proverbs for wisdom, and God granted me that, so thank you for saying yeah. that. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. But well, to your credit, there's things you excel in as number one. Like, you're the guy out on the clubs, out in the boats, networking. That's your role. Mm -hmm. In that capacity, you're number one. That's when true. it comes oh, to the show, maybe Myron is more the number one in terms of 
you know, philosophies and, and, and right and wrong and kind of kicking chicks out and that's not your role, mm. but everyone excels in a different role. So you could be a number one in some things, but a number two in other things. Ah, that's yeah. a good point. As I wrap this up, I'm also reminded of another very powerful figure in the Bible. His name is King David. And David would not go without his mighty men. And these men's names were listed in the Bible in Second Samuel. But David could not do what he did in the Bible to expand God's territory, to command, to lead, to follow God's heart, to protect God's people, to expand his territory without David's mighty men. And so perhaps you're in an organization right now where you knew, you're going to seek out an organization where you can be one of the mighty men or one of the mighty women of that organization. And there's a major benefit for doing so. So if you're there right now and you say, listen, how do I beat this inflation thing? How to beat this interest rate thing? How to get to the top of my game? Maybe you got to look at the situation that you're in. Because you may not have to be the end all be all at your own individual company. Sometimes people think that there's, I gotta be an entrepreneur, entrepreneur. There's also a benefit of being an entrepreneur. There's the benefit of having a hybrid entrepreneur, entrepreneur type standpoint. And there's things that I'm doing that's separate from PHP, separate from Patrick, that I think I'm a very good number one at. And I'm evolving that. But meanwhile, I'm building my confidence, I'm building my cash flow, I'm building my skill set, I'm driving my results and proof of concept as a number two working side by side with a Patrick Bet David and the number one income earner here at PHP Agency. So with that being said, what are your thoughts? Do you feel the benefit and see the benefit of being a number two? Thoughts of working, partnering together with somebody, having patience with that relationship, having patience with yourself to make sure you maximize that relationship and the evolution of what that conversation brings and the success and the projects that you work on, what that does to your success. Put in the comment section, I want to know. That being said, guys, there's a couple other reaction videos here I'd love for you to check out. And if you haven't done so already, you have not purchased Faith Made Millionaire, please go on Amazon right now and purchase it. And uh, hope it blesses your life. There's many different things there that I've learned in my personal life, uh, many struggles that I hope that you can avoid too as well. Learn from my mistakes and uh, win sooner than later in your life financially by purchasing Faith Made Millionaire. If you watch this video and you found value in it, please consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of our other videos and you haven't done so already, please consider hitting subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy. Until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.